Hey everybody, this is Michael Pavlovich, and welcome to Intro to ZBrush Part 3. This section contains over seven and a half hours of instruction spread out over 67 videos. Now, this is Part 3, so if you haven't done it yet, go check out Intro to ZBrush Part 1, which is free on my YouTube channel, Gumroad, and the Lumi 3D Studios website. Part 1 is six hours of instruction with almost 50 videos and is designed to get you up and creating in ZBrush. Intro to ZBrush Part 2 has almost 8 hours of instruction spread out over 70 videos. In Part 2 we hit hotkeys and customization right off the bat, then we spend the rest of the time discussing mostly base mesh creation techniques and accessory mesh creation techniques. There's also bonus videos on the creation of the reptile creature that you see in the space armor suit for the cover art on Part 3, so definitely check those videos out. If anything, just to make sure you don't miss out on all the techniques to add and refine objects that will flesh out your overall design. Intro to ZBrush Part 3, the videos you're watching now, starts off with alphas and alpha brush creation. You can use these to help flesh out and try new ideas in the concepting phase and or add convincing detail during the polish phase of your design. From there we'll discuss slicing and remeshing in conjunction with panel loops as well as some panel loop functionality that may actually surprise you, such as the ability to inset and frame loops to provide a quick and consistent path to place your insert mesh detail on. After that we'll dive deep into ZModeler, discuss some of the new box modeling and subdivision preview functionality within ZBrush, and we'll use these methods to create custom insert mesh brushes later on to help provide convincing detail to our finished model. We'll go into poly painting basics and make sure you have a solid foundation to build your poly painting skills on. There's a poly painting demo of the reptile sculpt in part two, so these videos will make sure you can hit that level and beyond. If drawing in ZBrush is your thing, we'll talk about quick sketch functionality, how it's created, and a few other tips that'll get you creating 2D sketches, as well as integrating some of the built-in ZBrush functionality to help supplement your 2D with some 2.5D and 3D tricks. We'll go into the basics of materials, textures, lighting, and cameras in ZBrush, with accumulation of these skills leading up to light cap, image-based lighting, and render passes. All of this utilizing functionality built right into ZBrush. To supplement this talk, we'll hop into KeyShot to talk about their lighting and material system. Then we'll take all of these render passes, masks, and height maps, and I'll show you how to composite these in Photoshop for a final, non-destructive, polished image. The rest of part three will be time spent making sure you have a good foundation in multiple areas of ZBrush that we haven't covered yet. So we'll go over basic and intermediate fiber mesh creation and options, then hop into UV Master so we can quickly and easily give our meshes UVs, which we'll then use to bake maps right out of ZBrush. We'll also use these UV layouts in the surface noise section to make sure our tiling detail wraps around our meshes in a convincing way. We'll also talk about layers and morph targets to make sure you have total control over all the mesh details in this section. We'll talk about micro mesh and nano mesh, the differences between the two, and the power of both to generate high frequency detail and patterns to sell the textures and surfaces of your objects. We'll get into turntable movies, settings you'll need to be aware of to get the highest quality out of your movies, as well as some of the advanced camera functionality. We'll go into document tiling and some of the 2.5D brushes for quick and easy height, alpha, and texture creation. Then we'll discuss Projection Master with this 2.5D knowledge and push your detailing skills even further. We'll then use Transpose Master to do a quick character pose. We'll talk about array mesh functionality, both for asset creation as well as the ability to sculpt a mirrored mesh while having instances of that mesh elsewhere on your model. And finally, we'll wrap up with a number of movies touching on advanced functionality of some of the previous videos such as Transpose and DynaMesh. We'll also do a little practicing on DynaMesh slicing and merging, which I use in the creation of the Armored Reptile in the cover art for this section. Speaking of the Armored Reptile, just like in Part 1 and Part 2, there will be bonus videos, and it's probably no surprise it'll be on the creation of the cover art. We'll go through an overview of the creation of the Reptile Armor, from block out to the refined polish stage, and then we'll hop into KeyShot and Photoshop to talk a bit about the render and compositing process for the final image. So, by the end of part three, you should have a pretty comprehensive overview of ZBrush. Certainly enough to block out, refine, polish, game res, bake, render, texture. All of that is useful whether you're a concept artist, a production artist, an illustrator, a product designer, basically anybody who wants to use the power and speed of ZBrush to boost their productivity, usefulness to other departments, try out ideas, whatever you want to do, however you want to do it, these videos will help you on your way. So let's get in there and start ZBrushing.